Hello and welcome. One of the great blessings of ministry here in Tetnal Wood is to be involved with Christchurch Infant and Junior Schools. Although a quarter of all primaries in England are Church of England schools, there have been none in my previous parishes. So although I've been into school for assemblies and such like, I've not had the same level of involvement in any schools. It's commonly thought by those who are not involved in school today that children are not taught Christianity in school anymore. That simply is not the case by my experience and certainly not in church schools. In fact, the expectations for Christian distinctiveness are now much greater than 10 or 20 years ago. And that's not saying there is nothing Christian about non-church schools either. It's just the church ones I want to talk about today. So today anyway, here's a quick mix of experience locally with the Church of England's vision for its schools uh, as that's been explained by me uh, to me. First, before we get into this, the collect for the week, which of course began with Remembrance Sunday. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when war shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that earth may know the peace of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 8. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way, where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gate leading into the city, at the entrance she cries aloud. To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are upright to those who have found knowledge. Choose my instruction instead of silver, knowledge rather than choice gold, for wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. It was remembrance that brought today's theme to my mind. We've had in church this year the fullest remembrance display I can remember. Along with the poppy arrangements behind the altar and elsewhere, the wonderful knitted poppies that so many have kindly produced flow down from the pulpit and along the screen. These have been boosted by work from the school children. Next to the memorial plaques, we have a lovely display from the infant school, brightening up the whole area and giving a real focus. Children from the juniors have used recycling to make poppies to plant in the ground by the outside war memorial. And also covered a display board at the back of church, not just with decorations, but with thoughts and quotations about war and remembrance. It's clear the artwork comes out of the study they have done, which links history with spirituality, what we do today with what we may learn from the past. It's one of many points of connection between school and church, a partnership through which both can flourish. The Church of England's vision for education identifies four key strands which can be remembered on the fingers of one hand. The first, the first finger, the didactic digit it's sometimes called, is for wisdom, knowledge and skills. The normal stuff of education, if you like, what you learn in class, uh, knowledge and skills, but enhanced by wisdom tying in with passages like that from Proverbs, because it's not enough to know lots of stuff. You need wisdom to know what to do with it. 
remembrance, remembering war and the cost of war, exemplifies this point perhaps more than any other. The second finger, the big finger, is for hope, hope, aspiration and courageous advocacy. Christian hope is, of course, fundamental to the Christian gospel. Aspiration, the sort of aspiration we teach, is not merely monetary to earn the highest salary when you grow up, but to be the best person you can be, truly the person God has made you. And don't just aspire that for yourself. Aspire for others. Stand up for them. The third finger, a finger that won't really stand up on its own, is for community and living well. The stuff about relationships and getting on with each other that is so important in growing up and maturing. And then the fourth, the little finger, for dignity and respect. Above all, noticing and caring for the smallest and the weakest, the struggling, making sure no one gets left behind. Where is God in all this, you may well ask? Well, God is represented by the, the thumb, the thumb which can touch each of the other fingers. For God's not to be boxed in and confined, say, to, to RE or assembly time. God connects and underpins everything else. And put these together, we have a well thought through approach to education, which is deeply Christian, serving the common good. In today's multi-faith environment, this affirms that education in a church school is not to promote a sectional interest, let alone a sectarian interest, Rather, by being true to itself as deeply Christian, it will indeed be for the good of all. And for me, the school environment also challenges adult Christians and the church together about our expe expectations of growth. Do we ourselves expect still to be growing in wisdom, knowledge and skills. I think we should. Are we still growing in hope, in aspiration, in courageous advocacy? Are we still growing in community and living well together and addressing the issues that get in the way? Are we still growing in how we show dignity and respect? For none of us has yet reached the fullness of what God wants for us. Until then, we could all do with following the simple vision statement used with the children in school. Grow and learn together with God by our side.
Now let's pray for our schools, the children and teachers, and all in the school communities. So we pray for our schools, that they may be places where all can work together to build the strong foundations the children need through faith and through learning. Give the teachers renewed strength and energy, skill and enthusiasm to rise to the challenges of these times and to equip the children in their care to flourish now and in the future through Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for understanding by St Thomas Aquinas. Lord, instruct my tongue and pour upon my lips the grace of your blessing. Give me acuteness to understand, capacity to retain, insight to interpret, facility to learn, and eloquence to speak. Guide me in my beginnings, direct my progress, and set your seal upon my conclusions. For you alone, Lord Jesus Christ, are truly God and truly man, and live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. And the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.